Hey, 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 welcome to another Valley Forged. Super excited to make this video today. I can do acrylic, you can do acrylic on a diode laser and some of you may know that, I had no clue. I mean, I come from CO2 lasers and uh, you know, 150 watts, I could blow through acrylic like it was nothing. I had all these tips and tricks and techniques and uh, you kind of have to throw those out the window when you're doing a diode laser. And I'm gonna show you what to do and what not to do. Uh, yes, that actually happened. Uh, you know, and it was completely my mistake. Not only coming one thing coming from CO2 lasers and another thing, just having not worked with acrylic in a few years. Uh, you know, I had the K40 and that was the only reason I used that thing, but uh, it, it has been a while. So I'm gonna get into everything and I'm gonna show you what happened and what not to do as well. So diode lasers, first of all, I, I have a 30, I'm so blessed. Yes, I have a 36 watt Acer and it did such a wonderful job. Now, what do you need? I think a 10 watt laser can do this. Uh, it's gonna take quite a few cuts and I'm gonna go over what those settings are in a little bit. But uh, to, so many channels and uh, I wholeheartedly concur that 20 watts is such a sweet spot. You could do just about everything with a 20 watt laser that I do on the 36. Uh, it may take you one more pass or something, uh, but it's really not uh, a huge difference. I do have a 10 watt laser over there. It just came in and I'm setting it up. So I will also see what can be done. So in this video, I hope to inspire you and I also hope to save you a ton of money showing you what works and what doesn't work. But most of all, it's just about the imagination and getting things flowing and realizing, hey, look, you can mix wood and acrylic. You could do different things. And this happens to be, well, first thing I wanna say is, last video, I talked about wood. So if you, a lot of you have probably already seen that. Um, I, where I get my wood, I get my wood from Craft Closet. Uh, that's not sponsored. That's me. That's, you know, I've been buying wood all over the place. There's a lot of great companies. I have a video on several different companies before. They're all great. But when it came to everything, you know, price and selection and how fast I got the stuff and the quality of the stuff, I just kept ending. I just ended up going back to Craft Closet. It just, it, it, you know, it's one of those things that you just build up a memory of, oh yeah, this works for me. That's why I go to Buckle Guy to get my leather. You know, they don't sponsor me. It's just, I just like the quality of their packaging. It's not cheap by, by any means. But over all the places that I've gone, it just was the one that I kept coming back to. And that is how I feel about Craft Closet. I just kept going back and getting their stuff. I need consistency. You know, if I'm making the same products, and these are just, you know, I said in the last wood uh, video, hardwoods, and what I actually meant to say is solid woods. So you can get the MDF core stuff that I use a lot uh, on everything, but I also use the hardwoods, and I use them you know, you can see I mix and match them when I'm making my bottle openers. Now this SVG is actually, there's a link in the description. This one is mine. I, I charge $2.20 and you can just put whatever you want. I literally in the past two weeks since I made that, you know, this was my first one. I have just put all different designs on it. I created these designs. You know, or I took some mountains, redid them and put them on, you know, and made a two piece thing. There's so much of your imagination you could do with these bottle openers. And I think they make really great gifts and uh, you can personalize them. Of course, Christmas is coming uh, no matter what time of year Christmas is coming. That's one thing you're always thinking when you have a, a laser business. Christmas is coming. That is your season. You're always preparing for Christmas. And so I'm just stockpiling these uh, right now and then I'll be selling them soon. So another thing, of course, you could do keychains. I learned how to do this from Louisiana Hobby Guy. 
So I'll try to remember to put a link in the description to that video where you can do this yourself. I'll also probably put these on Etsy. I charge 220 because Etsy has fees and whatnot. So I feel it's fair. I make like two bucks or something, but I'll put this one on actually. It probably won't be for this video, but just so people can download it and with a whole bunch of different designs. But this is my local area uh, with the keychain, and I, come on. I mean, this is a diode laser. I did this in red. It, it's beautiful. So we're gonna, together, I, I was having trouble with one color, and so I worked it out, and we're gonna, together, we're gonna unpeel this and see how it looks. So I did reach out to Craft Closet. They didn't reach out to me. I reached out to them, and I said, hey, what do you want people to know about your business? And they said you get $20 off the first order of $100 or more. If you order $100 or more, you get free shipping. So it all worked out anyway. This is how I first did it. So what you do is you go to their site, you sign up on their thing, you get a link, and then you get your $20 off. So just remember to do it in that order. You also get an affiliate link because you're part of their program just like the one I'm going to leave below. So use mine to go get the thing. It's not a special thing. It's not a sponsored thing. You're going to get one too, but just use mine. I want to see if it works. And, uh, you know, am I going to get some points or something? I, I don't know. Uh, this is a new thing for me, uh, but I do recommend them. And hey, you might as well get the discount. So I, you know, I made bottle openers and keychains just because that's what I'm working on right now. You could do, of course, a variety of things in an acrylic. Earrings are re really, really a good, good deal. And so let's go over what worked. What worked right out of the box. Uh, they sent me uh, quite a few different um, acrylics, and. This Crimson Obsessed, you already see it. You see it here. You saw it in the keychain I made because I really, really like it. It cuts so, I even wrote easy on here. It cuts so easily. I was just, I was really blown away. You know, the, the shields or the eyeglasses a lot of times are made out of a red color or an orange. So I was figuring, hey, you know, it's probably not going to cut that well. But uh, it, it really worked great. Uh, I have this on my 36 uh, watt. I have it 280 speed, 100, that's uh, millimeters per minute, 100 uh, power, and uh, two passes. I found that if you do really love, we're going to get into that when you saw, that, you saw the thing at the beginning of the video. There were several mistakes going on there, but one of them was too high, uh, too low a speed. To, uh, I'm always running at 100% power. Uh, that's just, I think, the way it works. Uh, times two. So I did two passes at 280 speed. I think at 300, it would have cut it easily. And uh, this is, is just wonderful. Very crisp edges right away. I haven't sanded these. I didn't touch them. Then they feel nice and clean. Very, very happy with the Crimson Obsessed. Uh, the one I think is the most beautiful and also cut pretty easy. And you can feel it's heavier and thicker, but it's still cut at 280, 100 times two. Uh, still, again, pretty, not quite as buttery smooth. I think I would put take a really light sandpaper, just hack off the edges on that. Uh, but it's still very good. And this stuff is so gorgeous. I'm sure I'm putting up some pictures of a lot of this stuff, but this one, ah, I can see you doing a lot of psychedelic things and I, it's just really beautiful. And I'm so surprised. I now have the ability to put this in my repertoire. You can see I'm matching, you know, acrylic and wood together, trying to see, hey, what combinations work? What's, what can I do? That's, that's the thing about uh, lasers is, imagination and be able to do something nobody has ever, ever done before. There's not a lot of crafts that you can do these days that are just completely original that nobody's done before. A lot of people have done bottle openers, uh, but I'm doing stuff nobody's ever done before. And it's also can be very personal. You can make personalized things, which is of course something lasers are wonderful at. Uh, a, a huge surprise here is actually 
chrome. Now they have like chrome, they have I think uh, different tints of chrome, uh, chrome like uh, copper and things like that. That is a, a real big surprise that I'm able to cut that. It, it has to be specially made for this because there's no way that you're gonna be cutting uh, something like chrome. You know, I think they have one that's even called mirror or something. We're gonna go over that in a little bit on the computer. But that is, blew me away. Cut just fine. Where are we at? I'm gonna actually give you the 280, 100 times two. And this is the thicker one. These are all technically an eighth, but you know, there is some variation. Still, cut like butter, can't believe it. Again, 36 watt diode laser, but I think in our 20 watt, you would not have too much trouble. Uh, this one here is called Wyvern Scales. For all you Dungeons and Dragons fans out there, you'll know exactly what, what this is. And it's super beautiful. Now you can see the sides are different. So depending on what kind of look you want to get, you can have this sort of look or this sort of look. And uh, this one took me three passes. I don't know why it's different, but it took me three passes, but it's still pretty darn smooth on the edges. Uh, very few edges where I would like want to, you know, knock off or whatever. Very clean. And this is my first try. I mean, I'm sure I could get better, but very, very nice. Wyvern scales. Now this was my biggest surprise of all. Silver pixie dust. How the heck is a diode laser cutting through this? I mean, look at it. It is so reflective. No problem. Actually, I'll take that back. It did take me four passes. So 280, 100, four passes. Still pretty smooth on the edges, surprisingly, with four passes. But no problems. It didn't seem to cause any issues. Cut real well. And it's something I can use. Very happy with that. And as you can see also, you know, I'm mixing and matching that. And I, I think it makes a really nice contrast. There's going to be a lot of use for this. And earrings. I mean, I think this is really going to work well. It's just a matter of me getting my imagination wrapped around using acrylic again. And uh, this is actually a textured acrylic. So it's just black on the back and it's, it's definitely not see-through. Uh, this was the first thing, second thing I tried. Uh, I, 200, 100, I'm using air for everything here, and I, I'll get into that in a second, <laughs> as you could already see. But yeah, this cut very easily. Uh, I, again, I'm not sure what I would use this for, but it does have like a, a texture to it. So it's not just flat. So it, yeah, very interesting. Um, Probably my least favorite as far as like, I don't know, just what I would use it for. I can't imagine making a keychain with it or something and it's hard to print on. But I'm sure somebody out there has an amazing use for that that I haven't thought of. All right, now let's get for the stuff that I didn't, that didn't work out well for me. Uh, this one is, I think this is obsidian or something. It's kind of like a marble and you can see it's got lots of reflective stuff inside. It looks like that reflective stuff is embedded. I can't even, because I can see a few of it going through the side. And I think that might have been the difference. There's a couple of differences with this particular one. Uh, it, all the other ones that worked right out of the box for me very easily had a paper backing. This one has a plastic backing. Now I needed to take that off and I didn't, I didn't try masking it because it just, it felt to me like the laser was reflecting. And that's one thing that I don't want to happen because that will hit my lens. I am not the biggest expert on this. All I got to say is, I mean, hey, the glitter worked great, but for some reason, I just, this wasn't working well for me. It just, it seems like it bubbles up, that it doesn't cut well. I, I couldn't get it to go through. So if somebody out there has a better experience with that, uh, great, uh, maybe pass it on. But uh, that one didn't work for me. 
Most all of them did, but that one did not. <laughs> and last but not least, we have to get into this. This was the very first thing I tried. And I, again, I hadn't done uh, acrylic on a CO2, I mean on a diode laser for a long time because I had had such bad luck with it. And I wasn't expecting this to work at all. Now, I threw it in there, I put it at uh, 200 uh, speed and 100 power, no air, and it caught on fire. Now, what were my mistakes? And this is important for everybody so that they don't make the same mistakes I did. It was a good wake-up call. It made sure that I had all of my... I, I haven't had a fire in my laser for... I can't even remember. I mean, it just doesn't happen. Well, I didn't have the air on for one, which I don't when I use the CO2. I feel like uh, the air actually cools it down. But then I'm working on a CO2 laser with, you know, a compressor. This is definitely not so strong. So, first of all, I didn't have the air on. So once I turned the air on, that ended that whole problem. But the second thing is, is I didn't realize that this had a plastic film on it. Now, because uh, all the other ones had paper, you know, it was just something I forgot because I do remember that there's a lot of acrylic that comes with this. I never liked it. This clear plastic film stuff that comes over the top of it, it's always been harder to work with. I just never liked it. Uh, so that may have been a big part of the problem here. Once I took that off, and uh, I turned the air on and was a little more familiar with my settings. It worked great. So here's, here is my next try at it. And this is uh, 280 with 100% power, uh, three passes. And it did leave it a little bit crusty on the edges. So you can see, maybe you can see here, I sanded this just a couple of shots on each side and it smoothed it out and it's very nice. So it's totally usable. But what I found, and I had to do the same thing when I, when I did, uh, what, but I, I decided I wanted to mask it, you know, so that it'd be closer to what the other stuff is. And I think that made a, a, a good difference. I, I like it. It's still a little bit rough on the edges, but it cut out real nice. 280, 280 speed, 100% power at three passes. I think after two, it actually had cut it out. Um, but I wanted to get it done for this video. And I wanted to show you on screen. Oh, before I go any further, you know, make sure water isn't going to help you a ton always, you know, Water may not be the best solution when you're dealing with a plastic. I have a fire blanket. I think that's the best solution. You just smother that thing. It's better than squirting some sort of, you know, you want a fire extinguisher around in a big emergency, but if you just got a, a little fire that you can put out uh, a fire blanket and turn off the air, make sure there's no air, you know, we keep oxygen away, but that, that dealt with it no problem. And it's much, uh, I think, you know, better for not destroying your laser. But that's my personal opinion when it comes to safety. That's everybody's, you know, business to make sure they take care of themselves. All right, so the big reveal. So you can see I did this one in the crimson. And I think it turned out great. This was my first try. But the weeding is unreal. I definitely would not do that. When it comes right out of the machine, you could probably see it, but... It's not that visible. So what I do is I do all of the etching and then I spray paint white over the top of it and then I weed it. Now you could do the opposite. You could spray paint something and then do the cutout and that's probably a much, much simpler idea. But I just wanted to do this to actually show what was possible and is, uh, is doing keychains on a diode laser, you know, a good idea? And uh, let's see how this turns out. We'll do it together. All right. I would say that's a winner. I'll take a picture uh, of it and put it up on the screen. But you can see that looks really nice. So if you're, especially for a gift, you know, you'd probably be willing to go through and do all of this weeding 
There's better ways. You can use a mask and just put it over the top and rip it off. But really, this is just more of a proof of concept. You know, if you come up with an idea, can you make it? Now, what I don't know yet is, okay, say you're doing intricate things. That is really difficult. Whether you're working on a CO2 or a, a diode laser, getting something with a lot of intricate cuts because that heat is coming right next to each other. And so a lot of times it just tends to melt. So things like this are wonderful because you don't have a lot of cuts that are right next to each other. So um, I would definitely say go with that. Um, but do your own testing. Have some fun. Maybe don't listen to me. I mean, I'm showing you the extent of what I know about CO2 uh, acrylic with diode lasers. Uh, you know, there may be a whole lot more that we can learn, a whole lot more that we can do. And I'm hoping that people out there will uh, come up with great ideas and uh, pass them on to everybody. I would love to see everybody here become, you know, uh, laser experts and teach me. Who's the next Louisiana hobby guy out there? You know, who's the next Clack Shack or Ventari or, you know, you could start where I'm at. You know, it's fun. Lasers are amazing. So let's go over to the computer and I'll go over these and kind of show them to you, see what they got. And all right, all. So let's go over what I was talking about. These are, this is actually the keychain that I cut out with the acrylic. I learned how to do this from Louisiana Hobby Guy. I'll try to leave a link to that video in the description if you guys want to make your own keychains. And acrylic is a great way to go for that. Uh, the other thing I'm using is the bottle opener. Now, this one is mine, and uh, the link is down below for the SVG for that. And uh, you could use this to make so much, man. I am such on a kick right now. Uh, these are the 7-inch ones, which are really, really cool. Now, as far as the craft closet, uh, if you go to their main site... It's really nice. It's You have a diode laser catalog. So you could just click on that and then click on acrylics. And you'll see all of the ones that I had here. In fact, if we go to page two, you see Wyvern scales here that I have. You can get dragon scales. Uh, the one I really, really love was that foxglove color wave. That is so cool. Very psychedelic. Uh, I didn't have the Hydra scales. That one looks cool. Uh, the Belladonna color wave looks really nice too. Definitely would try that one out. Uh, this is that textured one that I got. Um, you know, I'm sure there's a great use for it. I just can't think of it <laughs> right now. Uh, and really, really, like I said, surprised that the metallics are working so well. These are definitely made... Four lasers, and they cut out so well. Who would have thought you could do metallic? So they have a huge variety of colors. And uh, give me some feedback. Let me know how it all works for you. Here's the Crimson Obsessed. Absolutely love that one, too. I'd say that's my second favorite. But then they have lots of basic colors. Like I said, you could use them behind something or make layers. There's just a million things you can do with a laser. And that is what I love. Now, this is not a me talking to you experience. I want to hear and see what you come up with. Now, if you do it on, you know, a keychain or a, uh, oh, sorry, a bottle opener or whatever, you can post the picture on Etsy. Uh, let me know. I don't know how you're going to let me know, but I'd, I'd absolutely love to see pictures of, I guess you can go to my Facebook or Instagram or something like that. And uh, I'd love to see pictures of what you're doing and what you make out of acrylic on a diode laser. I'm still tripping me out just to even say that. I was so over it. <laughs> I really was. I was. But diode lasers have come so far. When I was over it, I was using a 10-watt laser. Still maybe cap capable for this, but 20, 20 watts is, like, you know, everybody says it. All the channels say it. It's the sweet spot. 20 watts just seems to be the sweet spot. You could do so much more, exponentially more than you could do with a 10 watt, in my opinion. Unless you're just 
engraving all the time. If if engraving is your kick, I can see a five or ten watt laser being your thing. But I'm leaving this video a very happy person that I have more things that I can do on my laser. And so go over to Craft Closet, sign up, get your twenty dollars off, and all that good stuff. Like again, not a sponsored video. I'm literally just using their stuff, and I do appreciate. That means they sent me that stuff to, to check out. All right. I will see you all in the next one. Love y'all.